So you want to know how to build a PvP character on the Elder Scrolls Online? Well in this one I'm going to share with you the tips and tricks and secrets I've learned having played this game for nearly 4 years. So stick around. Hey, it's Dan and welcome back to Unified Gaming. Now as we said in the intro, we're going to go through and break down how do you build a PvP character in the Elder Scrolls Online especially for the upcoming serial test on the 15th. If you've lived under a rock for the past couple of days, Cinemax Online are looking to do a test in the live PC EU servers and the live PC NA servers where they are disabling proc sets or any set that has a condition to check to it. What does that mean really? Well, you know, there's a video on the channel, you can check it out. But the general sort of consensus is that anything that has a check has its 5p so its bonus check when you disable. So Crimson, Eternal Vigor, Swarm, uh, Swamp Raider for example, Blessing of Tentaste, a special effect on that, your monster set 2 piece bonuses, like the list goes on and on and on. Rather than go through and say what is disabled, we're going to focus on what is allowed and what you can use. The one thing I would like to say though is that the way in which you kind of use the sets, the two, the three, the four piece bonuses work regardless of proc set or not, it's just the five pieces disabled. We are going to focus on the ones that have five pieces enabled though, because you get a lot of power for those, so those are the ones you want to use and build. And what I can guarantee after this is that you have a tried and tested method that you can use to build your own character for the Elder Scrolls Online in PvP. So we're just going to get straight into it. As you can see on the screen right now, there's a graphic that I've made and you're probably going, Whoa, it's really busy. And let me break it down so you can see exactly how it works. The columns are broken into three parts, defense, damage, and sustain. The way in which I see a build is that there are three kind of cornerstones to any build. And these are those, defense, damage, and sustain. If you lack one of these, your build will be bad. That's just period, okay? So there's a few ways you can fix it, which we'll get through in the adjustment box on the bottom right. As you can see, the sets are color coded to make it even easier. Red is kind of tanky, staying alive, that kind of stuff. That's one in defense typically. Your blue ones are your sort of magicka sets. Your green ones are your stamina sets. And anything with star is kind of like, they're more PVE, but they're on the list. So you won't really use them. If it has a C next to it, you can craft it, which is brilliant. So actually you can just make a lot of these stuff just with craft, like crafted sets, which is great. And all the yellow ones are just like monster sets that are one piece bonuses that are still really good to use. So that's why I've gone through and added them for you. Now, how do you use it? You know, what do you do? Well, the way in which you need to build is you have to consider what race you are first and foremost and build around that. If you are an Argonian, a Dark Elf, a Nord, or an Imperial, you can typically pick Magical or Stamina for your class and like for how you build it, so it doesn't matter too much for you. But if you're a Breton, a High Elf, you then need to really spec into Magicka. If you're a Wood Elf, an Orc, or a Red Guard, you really need to spec into Magicka. Khajiit's kind of in the middle, but it's not great at anything, so I wouldn't stress too much if you're Khajiit. Like you can kind of do it all, but it's, it's so-so. But build into the race that is appropriate to you. I'm going to go through and show you a few illustrations on how do you use this format to make your own character. I'm going to go with what people you know like magical sorcerer. It's a really tried and tested class. It's really strong in PvP if built right, but if not, it's really bad. So how do you build it? Well, what you want to understand is that max resources, so max magicka, does increase your damage done. So does max stamina. So for magicka builds, you typically find that you get more sort of bang for your buck. You spec them to magicka because it buffs your shields, which is your defense indirectly, and it also buffs your damage. So you kind of get two benefits with it. So I would suggest as a magicka build, particularly a sorcerer, to specialize in max magicka sets. So what sets can we use? Well, we can use something like Crafty Alphique. Crafty Alphique is a phenomenal Magicka set. It's Magicka, 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 Magicka. It's just perfect for a Sorcerer. And as Sorcerer uses shields heavily to stay alive, this is just like made straight for them. We have 12 pieces available. This takes five. So okay, cool, that's five already used. I've got 12 left. I'm gonna use Ancient Grace times three. And if you're unsure what these sets do, you can join our Discord. We do have a bot in there that if you do like exclamation mark sets, 
and then the set name will pop up. Or you can check esosets.com or the uh, Frex Lite wiki, however you say it. But you can check those places there. At the moment, I have Magicka and Magicka. I've got 8 out of 12 pieces. I'm then going to probably add in more Magicka. And you're probably going, what on earth are you doing? I'm going to use 2 willpower for this, so I don't have to use all 3. Okay? So, Magicka, Magicka, Magicka. And you're looking at my building now going, well, I have no defense and no sustain. And that is absolutely correct. So what you need to now do is decide how do you go from here? Do I go with defense and put on some defensive monster sets to fix it? Or do I go with sustain and put on something like choker form in one piece to get some more recovery? Or do I just visit the adjustment box and fix it with these tweaks? So for me, I'm going to focus on damage for my build and I'm going to fix it with the adjustment box. And this is what I do for a lot of my builds. It's a really good way to build a character. So I've got all my four damage sets set up on the build editor and on live. If you do this, you get 48k Magicka. If you have inner light, it's 52,000 Magicka with 2k spell damage at least. So loads and loads of damage basically. But I am super, super squishy and I have no sustain. The way to fix it though is, well the sustain, I could change my Mundus, my food or my glyphs. If I use my Mundus and my glyphs, I actually get up to 1900 recovery. So that's 1900 magic recovery with like 52k magicka and 4, 000, uh, 2400 spell damage roughly buffed, which is loads of damage basically. And you're probably going to go, well, you're going to be uber, uber, uber squishy. You're 100% right. So how do I fix the squishiness? I've got no sets. I can't do anything. So once again, I go to the adjustment box and the way to fix defense is the vampire stage three. If I don't have this, I'm going to be like a glass cannon and I just need to accept that. So I either go with a glass cannon, or I'd be a Vampire Stage 3, and I get some bulk behind me. This passive here, Vampire Stage 3, is worth about 10,000 armor on average. If you're um, below 50% health, it's up to like 15k armor. And if you're above 50% health, it's about like 7,000 armor. It's not shown on your stat page, but that's kind of what it's doing in effect. So this is a really good passive to get if you need defense. So for this build, I'd have really good damage. I'd fix my sustain with... You know, Mundus and Glyphs, and my Vampire will fix my defense. For my food, then I go, well, do I need more sustain? If so, I could use Clockwork Citrus Filet, Witch Mothers, for example, or I could go with more max stats, like um, I would typically do the Witch Sugar Skull, sorry, which will fix more max resources. And then I'm going to go, actually, well, my, my magic looks really high. My stamina is like 19k with these two sets here. It's great but my resources for health are quite low. You know, I've tested this on the build editor. It has 24,500 health, but it has 52k Magicka. So the no brainer there is just change my attributes from Magicka into health. So I normally recommend having about 16 in health with the rest of Magicka. That's kind of a good sweet spot or 32, 32 is also a really good sweet spot. And if you do this correctly, you would end up having a sorcerer with a, you know, a PVP sort of stat page that has 28k health with 16 points of ma um, health roughly. You'd have about um, 48,000 Magicka, 2.5k as well damage nearly buffed if you add in Berserk, Glyph and stuff, and 1900 recovery with having almost 20,000 armor plus the Vampire passive. This would be pretty much the best in slot Magic Sorcerer you will get for just an all round jack of all trades. You might go though, I want to be a glass cannon, I'm happy to die. You could then simply go, well, let's go and swap our Swarm Mother and Dompus. They're great, but let's go with something like one Valken Scoria, which is Penetration. And we could then go with one Balorg. We're going to swap our Ancient Grace down to Spinners. So we now have 5, 10, 11, 12. This is even more damage, but our shields are going to be smaller as a result because we have less Max Magicka. But this is like the hardest hitting spec you'll get across Orc. For more damage, just simply slap on more glyphs from the adjustment box and you have as much damage as you can possibly get, but you are a glass cannon as a result. You can use this process for any class. So I'm going to go through now and just show you a few different specs for Magicka. So like Warden, Nightblade and so on. And just what I would re like recommend, and I will also put some links in the um, description of just build editor websites with actually just mock-ups that you can see from this. So. You know, do check that out if you haven't already and make sure that you are subscribed because you know I'm going to post much more content about this kind of stuff so yeah how do I do this for Nightblade? 
Well, Night Blades typically, like most Magicka builds, they benefit from having just really high Max Magicka. You know, that's kind of what they benefit from. So, in order to benefit with that, Crafty Alphic is great because that gives you some shields, you get good scaling with the Siphoner passives. I'd also recommend having something like Spinners because Night Blade, although it hits hard, it does lack some penetration and some just final oomph. And Spinners really fix that. But you'll see that I'm out of resources already, I've got no sustain. So I'm either going to go with more damage and go, okay, just fix it with Glyphs, which is quite a good way to do it on Night Blade. So I'd recommend using Crafty Alphique, Spinners. I would probably use, in all honesty, one Valken Scoria for more damage. And I'd also use one Balorg Straight Keener. If you want a bit more max stat, though, um, Swarm Mother is a really useful one to have. So that's kind of what I'd use this sort of set here. To fix this, then, Alphic, Spinners, Falcon Scoria, Swarm Mother. I'd go with Vampire Stage 3 to give me the defense I need. I'd use two Regen Glyphs and the Regen Mundus with one Spell Damage Glyph. And this will be a really hard hitting Magic Knight Raid with okay defense. If I find I die too quick on Magic Knight Raid, though, I would just change this and go, look, okay, I need to have Mightitude, and that's a must. I need to also go and get Pirate Skeleton, that's a must. And I'm probably going to keep my damage sets, though, but change my Mundus to the Lover Mundus, the Lady Mundus, sorry, which is more armor. I put all Glyphs onto recovery, so I'd have about 1400 recovery with this build and about 25k armor, with around about 38k Magicka and most no penetration. So it's kind of a good jack of all trades build. It will hit hard, it will be really hard to kill because it's got some resistance and you can put more points in health to make it even bulkier. So that's Magicka Nightblade. If you're a Magicka Templar using this format, you want to spec in two spell damage. You have access to Minor Sorcery, which gives you more damage. So Julianus is a no-brainer. You then want to pair this with something like Three Willpower, which gives you a big spell damage boost. You then have, you know, four pieces spare roughly that are kind of useful i would recommend going with sort of three ancient grace so you've got five eight eleven you've got one piece spare now that one piece of spare i'll probably put that on for balorg this will give me basically spell damage spell damage spell damage and this will give me just more resources to work with i'm going to be super squishy so i'd recommend putting on some vampire stage three or some glyphs the one thing i know haven't played uh, templar quite a lot though is that typically you run out of stamina quite often because you're a melee based magic build. So I would recommend, rather than going for just pure damage, drop a bit of this and then instead run Shackle Breaker. Shackle Breaker is phenomenal on Magic Templar. That's five pieces. That's five pieces. Yeah, that's five, ten. Okay, okay, I know you can use two of these then. So I just need to accept two of those. Or what I could do is swap this for Ancient Grace. Okay, I'm going to get my spell of damage from Balorg. And that, that's still good damage, that's still good damage, still good damage. So this is good damage, this has damage in it as well. So I'm going to have pretty good damage. I'd use 5 Shackle Breaker, 3 Ancient Grace, 3 Willpower, 1 Balorg. I now have a bit more sustain, which is great. I'm going to be a Vampire Stage 3. I might even use the Heavy Armor because I can craft this in Heavy Armor now, which is really useful. So there's loads and loads of benefits to this. And for things like Magical Warden, you want to build it like a Sorcerer, so high max magic is a really good way to do it. Um, if you're a DK, build similar to a Templar, and if you're a Necromancer, you know, just make it a Crafter and don't do PvP, that's pretty much what I'm going to say there. As with kind of stamina builds, it's very similar. You typically want to have weapon damage though on stamina builds, and this is quite consistent for all stamina builds. So you will typically want Hunting's Rage, you will probably want Agility times 3, you will then want to have Balorg and Molokina. And then you can go, got damage, damage, damage. I need to fix my sustain. Well, as a stamina build, you don't need as much, you can get away with it. So I'd probably go Heavy Hunting's Rage, Agility 3, Balorg and Kina times 1. So that gives me obviously 5, 8, 9, 10, or 2 pieces spare. Now, do I go with more max resources, more max health, more survival? What I'll probably do is actually use one piece, uh, three piece endurance on my body, which is health, and it's also health recovery, and use one piece this, so one Balorg. I'll have damage, 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 health recovery, and health. 
Sustain wise, I can fix that with my food. So typically I'd use Artean Takeaway Broth. That's a really good way to fix it. Or you could use things like Jubilus Candle and Throne. That's another good option. Or you just heavy tackle oil. That's pretty much what you should do really, but those are some options there. This here is kind of one of your more damagey setups for um, stamina builds. So this would be great on Stamina Nightblade. High damage, high damage, high damage. Bit of survival when you're in Cloak. So this is great. You can do more complicated stuff like put this on the back bar and then have a bit more damage on the front bar. So there's ways around that where you might use Agility, 2H, use a one piece um, on the body. So you get the damage on the front. You have the, this, you can probably start an extra piece at all times. But that's a bit more complicated and we're not going to go through in this video here on how to do that. But if you want to see how to do that, you know, just check out our other builds. We do it quite often. That's a Nightblade. That's what I'll use my Nightblade. If I were to go and be, say, a Stamina Sorcerer, I'll go with Dragus Hulk because this works really well. Particularly if I'm a Werewolf, you get great scaling as a Werewolf with uh, Stamina. I'd then go, okay, I probably need some damage and some sustain because I like to Dark Deal a lot. So I'm use Shackle Breaker. Damage, damage, high max resources I'm pushing on this one. I'll probably then use Balor and Kina to fix it, to give me a bit more damage. All infused weapon damage. If you go actually, I can dark deal quite comfortably. I could then use Hunting's Rage for more damage. And you notice that these are medium armor specs typically, because I actually have good damage as a stand build. Survival wise, you'd, you either have um, no damage, heavy armor stuff, or you have damage with medium. It's really hard to get damage and um, survival in one build with just stats. It's, like, with these sets, it's almost impossible. It's hard, basically. So this is what I would recommend to do this for like damage builds. And you just repeat this process. You basically pick two sets that are, you know, of use that you think, oh, actually, that could probably go well together. So I might use something like Agility, three-piece there. I might use Dragus Hulk, more damage will actually go. Let's go with Beekeeper. I'll make this more of a tanky damage dealer. Beekeeper, plus Fortified Brass, and then agility, so that's five, ten, two of those. If you want to make it even less tanky, go just a bit that tanky and damage. Let me go with Hungdin's Rage, Fortified Brass, Agility times two. Or I could go with Balorg and Kina, Fortified Brass, Hungdin's Rage, or Draga King's Hulk. And that's a tanky damage dealer. You won't be hitting as hard as some of the other stand ones that we just shown, but you'll still have good damage. But yeah, this is how I do it. I make my sets, I then adjust the build using the adjustment box. So my glyphs, my food, my mundus, my race or attributes, being a vampire or not. These are a really, really good way to kind of just adjust stuff. And this is what I'd recommend doing. But I'm going to kind of wrap this one up here. So I think I've gone through enough and kind of shown you how to do this, what you need to know. Um, if you have any questions though, go, oh, um, Dan, what would you run on uh, Magdine Gate? Or uh, what would you run on Sam Necro? You know, leave a comment, I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Alternatively, if you jump into our Discord, there's like 700 people or so. We've got class channels and stuff, so you can just chat to people in there. They'll help you out. It's very, very chill. Like, we don't have any sort of just people being harsh and stuff with each other. It's really, really relaxed, as you can tell from how I am. So, yeah, you know, links and stuff is in the description. But I'm just going to kind of call this one here. So I want to say a massive thank you to those Patreons. Like their support just allows me to make these videos. So a huge, huge thank you from the bottom of my heart, guys. And if you want to support myself and the channel to get access to the videos early and all that good stuff, there is a link in the description. Don't feel you have to. Just liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing really, really helps. So, you know, if you haven't done that, do do that. It really, really helps, guys. I'm like, pushing for 10k subs. So that'd be amazing. But yeah, I'm going to call this one here. So I'm going to wrap it up. I'll see you in the next video or on the next stream. So thanks for watching. Take care and bye.